What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we have got our Week 15 Fantasy Running Back starts and sits for every single matchup, so make sure to tune in. And if you guys enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe. And in the meantime, give us a follow on Twitter at AllDayPickskin to continue interacting with us there, shooting us your questions. We'll make sure to answer them. And also, check us out online at AllDayPickskin.com. Sign up for our free newsletter to get access to exclusive content. All those details in the description. But for now, let's get right into it. Before getting into our breakdowns, I want to give you guys a quick word from our sponsors at Overlay Fantasy Sports who are taking DFS to a whole nother level. And I specifically want to highlight their matchup shop function, which is an absolute blast. In fact, we've been using it since the start of the NFL season because let's face it, betting on the same old team A versus team B can get a little bit stale, a little bit boring. Well, that's not even close to being the case with the matchup shop of Overlay Fantasy as it allows you to bet on individual player matchups and it's super simple just pick whichever player you think will have the higher fantasy performance and just like a regular bet would work check out the spreads do your research and then win some money you can bet on pretty much any single sport that you want you know whether it's nfl golf mlb etc all those options are there and again, super simple, pretty much for any single NFL game coming up, you've got a bunch of different matchups that are always updated and added to. So if it's something as simple as just putting a single submission, you can do that. But guess what? If you want to get a parlay going and double up some of those winnings, you can do that as well. So take advantage of this. All of that homework you're doing for your fantasy lineups, let's have that translate to some big time winnings for your wallet as well. So do yourself a favor and check out Overlay Fantasy's matchup shop now. Our first game of the week, we have got the LA Chargers at the Las Vegas Raiders on Thursday night. And as far as running backs to start, let's begin with the Chargers side of things where Austin Eckler is an absolute slam dunk, but that's if he plays. That's why you've got an asterisk next to his name because this last week versus the Falcons getting banged up a little bit and on a short turnaround, this is going to be a situation that has to be monitored all week long. And that's unfortunate because since returning from injury, he has been absolutely sensational, has an extremely high floor. And especially in PPR formats, he is a weekly RB1, and this is a great matchup as well. Now, if he doesn't play, then Kalen Balaj, though, still worth a start here. However, I would put him more so in the mid-level RB2 range. He should get the volume and should still put up decent numbers. As far as the Raiders, we've got Josh Jacobs, and regardless if he's putting out tweets out there right before game time about his playing status, we expect him to suit up in this contest. Now, for what it's worth, his ceiling not as high as that of Austin Eckler, but, you know, he's got high-end RB2 upside. It's a decent matchup. We think this game will be close, so his volume shouldn't really be all that in question. And for that reason, we like him as a start. Devontae Booker, however, uh, with Josh Jacobs healthy, Booker is a fade. So go with the two big names here, Eckler and Jacobs. Afterwards, we've got the Bills at Broncos on Saturday. Here, I'm not really interested in starting any one of these guys. You know, if you force me to pick one of these starters, I guess I would go with Singletary and Gordon the way that I have them listed. But the problem with the Bills and Broncos backfields, kind of like how we've been saying for several weeks now, is they're both for the most part, in the same situation. It's a running back by committee where both parties just vulture opportunities away from each other. For Singletary, you've got Moss. For Gordon, you've got Lindsey. You know, maybe Singletary has a little bit more upside because of the usage. Same with Gordon, but I don't see the game flow here for the Broncos being in their favor if I'm looking at which party I prefer. So if there's any side of, you know, this rushing game that I think will have more success. It will be the Bills side of things. But again, I think the best bet here is just to fade both parties. In my opinion, the Broncos game plan won't feature the rushing game all that much. And the Bills offensively, they've been so great through the air. I don't expect that to change all of a sudden. Moving on, we've got the Panthers at the Packers. Short 
turnaround here as well because this is another Saturday game. And the big news here, the name everybody is going to be searching left and right, Christian McCaffrey, obviously. Will he finally return this week? If he does, it's a great matchup but honestly he's pretty much matchup proof considering you know how much volume he gets as a pass catcher as well but that's the thing we don't know what will happen here and if he doesn't play which unfortunately is what i am betting on here then you go with mike davis you continue to go with him obviously the upside isn't as big as christian mccaffrey but he is a solid mid-level rb2 high-end rb2 even if you get those touchdowns in a good matchup versus this packers rush defense then on the other side you've got aaron jones yes the usage is frustrating between him and jamal williams and yes he should have been a smash play this last week it didn't happen versus the detroit lions defense but he's got another opportunity to make up for it versus this panthers rush defense that's been underperforming i like aaron jones more so than mike davis if christian mccaffrey doesn't play i i would put aaron jones as a high-end rb2 on the week then we've got the patriots at the dolphins for the Patriots, I think at this point, the most reliable running back is probably Damian Harris, and that's obviously in standard scoring formats, doesn't offer much as a pass catcher. This might be a bit of a tough matchup. I could see the Dolphins going up quickly on the Patriots, but if it's close, this plays you know, into a good situation for Damian Harris. He could go from a high-end RB3 to a decent low-end mid-level RB2, which is what we're hoping for. Then for the Dolphins, if Miles Gaskin is cleared from the COVID list, you play him. He is the highest upside running back here for the Dolphins. If not, DeAndre Washington, you could take a chance on him, but he's nothing more than a high-end RB3 uh, I wouldn't expect big numbers from him in this divisional class versus this Patriots defense. And uh, as far as the other Patriots running backs, I'm fading Michelle. I'm fading James White. White, too dependent on the passing attack, which has been awful. Michelle, even when healthy. Harris has still been the guy, so no thank you to both. Next up, we got the Jaguars at the Ravens. You start James Robinson here. You know, it's a tough matchup, and the Jaguars will probably have to throw a bunch, but still, James Robinson is a weekly start. High-end RB2, in my opinion. Then for the Ravens, you know, for the record, I think this will be a heavy Lamar Jackson type of game because the Jaguars are absolutely atrocious defensively, and the Ravens' bread and butter is the rushing attack, and Lamar Jackson heads that out of anyone else. But since we do anticipate this to potentially be a blowout, then you're starting to look at other running backs that could make an impact. J.K. Dobbins right now is a little bit to some extent distance himself from, let's say, Gus Edwards, who seems to be the next guy up. Almost double the amount of carries versus the Browns this last week. So he'd be the guy that we take a chance on. You know, if you're really desperate, maybe you could go with Gus Edwards, but he will be touchdown dependent. If this is a blowout, however, it could work in your favor. So just keep those things in mind. Uh, however, though, we still like J.K. Dobbins the best here. We view him as a low-end RB2. Afterwards, Texans at the Colts. Only one side of this contest that we want to start. That's the Colts running backs. Jonathan Taylor and Naheem Hines. Great matchup versus this Texans rush defense. It's been getting gashed for a couple weeks now. Taylor's usage has kind of become what we were expecting at the start of the year, and that is a good thing for him. I view him as a solid mid-level RB2 on the week. And then same for Naheem Hines. You know, he's got that safe floor because of his PPR pass catching upside. Uh, I would probably call him a low-end RB2 in PPR scoring. Then for the Texans, whether it's David Johnson or Duke Johnson, I'm sitting both of the DJs here. I don't think this game flow will favor the rushing attack for the Texans. I think it'll feature a lot of passing. And, you know, even when Duke Johnson has been the guy, he still hasn't gotten enough passing work so for that reason i'm fading both of these guys i don't think it's going to favor the rushing attack for the texans so no thank you next up we get the lions at the titans this is a great running back matchup here deandre swift you know he is the top rusher for the lions now that he's back healthy you know he is the start every single week the highest upside out of adrian peterson and karen johnson who we currently have as sits i would put him in the rb2 category he will be game flow dependent however that is the tricky thing with him however for the titans this isn't tricky at all 
Derrick Henry will continue his December dominance and could very well be the top running back on the week yet again. We love the matchup versus this awful Lions defense. Moving on, we've got the 49ers at the Cowboys. This one's a little bit tough. You know, Raheem Mostert, Jeff Wilson are the only starters that we really like. And it's more so because of the matchup. Yes, these guys are, you know, kind of vulturing uh, opportunities away from each other. We understand it. But this Cowboys defense, not that great. The bread and butter for the 49ers, rushing the football. I think you could potentially get, you know, low-end running back two performances from both of these guys. Then for the Cowboys, it might sound crazy, but we have Ezekiel Elliott as a sit. The reason is this matchup not as friendly as that as the Bengals last week and Zeke wasn't all that great in that game either. You know, the 49ers defense much more stout and Tony Pollard has kind of been getting a little bit of a bump in usage. We don't like that for Ezekiel Elliott's upside. So yes, he's a huge name, but we would sit him here if you do start him, which again, we wouldn't blame you considering where you drafted Zeke and the type of upside that he has. Just temper your expectations. You know, best case scenario, I think you're looking at low end RB2 numbers, which again, you know, it could be reason enough to start him, but I just don't like the matchup here. Afterwards, Seahawks at Washington. We like Chris Carson, but this is a very tough matchup yet again. So temper those expectations. Don't don't expect what you saw last week versus the Jets. I'm looking at probably low-end RB2 numbers. Uh, and then for Washington, I don't expect for them to have Antonio Gibson in this game. If they do, then you start him. He is the preferred guy. But if not, J.D. McKissick could be a league winner to finish off the season, especially in PPR scoring. He's got some really nice upside as a pass catcher. And then if he can get you around 50, 60 yards on the ground, that's all you need. And then Peyton Barber, you know, he's more of that bruiser for Washington. But McKissick had a much bigger role in that department as well. And in a game where Washington will have to do a lot of passing to potentially keep pace with the Seahawks, I would be fading Peyton Barber. Then we go to the Bears at the Vikings. David Montgomery is a solid start. You know, this Vikings defense can be had. Now, for what it's worth, I wouldn't expect him to have those big numbers like he's had these last couple of weeks. But either way, he is a high-end RB2. And then Dalvin Cook, yes, it's a tough matchup for sure. But I think you have to start him. The usage is there. The Vikings want to run the football and he's had success versus the Bears before. I think you can get, again, probably at worst case scenario, mid to high end RB2 numbers from Dalvin Cook. Then we got the Bucks at the Falcons. Only running back I'm remotely interested in starting here is Ronald Jones. Something to monitor. He got a pin inserted in his finger. Will that affect his status for this game? If he doesn't play, then Leonard Fournette is bumped up, who, by the way, was a healthy scratch this last week, which is very concerning. So if Jones plays, forget about Leonard Fournette in this game. I think if Jones does play, he's going to be the guy. He'll get the volume, and he is a high-end RB2 on the week versus this Falcons team. Then for Atlanta, I have zero interest in starting any running back uh, for them versus this Bucks defense, where they're going to have to be very pass-heavy, you know, for the sake of this, we've only listed Todd Gurley's name because he's the biggest name in that backfield. And, you know, if we're fading him, then you should be fading the entirety of that backfield as well. Next up, we got the Eagles at the Cardinals. Miles Sanders, you start him. And, you know, last week was supposed to be an awful matchup on paper. And then wouldn't you know it, Miles Sanders goes ahead and does what he did. And that is have a great game. You know, a lot of it was due to a big run that resulted in, I believe it was an 80 yard touchdown, something like that. So don't expect what we're trying to say is that exact same type of production, but either way, you know, low end RB2 at worst. Then for the Cardinals, Kenyon Drake, you know, it's a tough matchup, but he's been gaining some steam these last couple of weeks, especially nice usage to see in the red zone. He's got decent touchdown upside. I would 
put him in the same category as Miles Sanders in terms of you know that low to mid level RB two, and then fading Chase Edmonds afterwards. You know, I I don't like the way the usage has been trending for Chase Edmonds uh, with what it's looked like for Kenyon Drake. So for that reason, I am fading him here. Afterwards, Jets at the Rams. Only one running back I want here, and that is Cam Akers. His usage has been great these last couple of weeks. Hopefully, he retains that starting status, and if he does, he could be a smash play here versus this awful Jets defense where I anticipate the Rams will have their way with them, and it could transition into a run-heavy type of scheme relatively quickly. So Cam Akers' upside, very, very big here high-end rb2 maybe could even be an rb1 on the week then afterwards i'm sitting frank Gore and pretty much the entire jets backfield awful matchup versus this rams defense and for the rams daryl henderson malcolm brown have pretty much been demoted to the backups of cam Akers. so no thank you to both afterwards chiefs at the saints look normally i wouldn't be starting clyde edwards alaire in this situation if let's say drew Brees was under center because this entire saints team becomes different even the defense in that case but with Taysom hill here and i anticipate this could be a blowout honestly because as good as the saints defense is it ain't slowing down patrick mahomes and if it's a blowout, Clyde Edwards Lair could get a lot of usage here. I think he is a solid low to mid level RB2 on the week. And then for the Saints, you have to start Alvin Kamara. You know, I don't think the game plan will favor the rushing attack. That's why I don't want to take a chance on Latavius Murray. But Kamara is so versatile that you start him. Uh, I still view him as a high-end RB2, low-end RB1. And then obviously sitting Le'Veon Bell after uh, Clyde Edwards-Alaire because, again, the volume just not quite there. Next up, Browns at the Giants. I honestly don't mind starting all of these guys. Nick Chubb is in standard formats. He's been great. A uh, huge touchdown upside, and then Kareem Hunt, that explosion of a game this last week versus the Ravens, you know, showing you that in PPR formats, he's still a very decent flex play, so I would start him if that's the case. You know, worst case, you get an RB3 type of situation. Then for the Giants, this is the thing to monitor here. Will Devonta Freeman come back? If he does, then I wouldn't start anybody here for the Giants. If he doesn't, though, Wayne Gallman, uh, I would roll with him. That's why you see the asterisk next to his name. He doesn't have the upside like a Nick Chubb or a Kareem Hunt. But again, you could do worse this week in terms of matchups and in terms of players where, you know, honestly, the situations could be a lot better when you look at some other matchups. Afterwards, Steelers at the Bengals. I'm sitting everybody here. You know, for the Steelers, their rushing attack has been awful. They've had a couple of decent matchups, and they still haven't produced. I, at this point, have lost faith in their rushing attack. Yes, that means I'm sitting James Conner. Then for the Bengals, look, whether it's Giovanni Bernard, whether it's P. Ryan, whoever it is for them, this is an absolutely atrocious matchup versus the Steelers. I anticipate the Steelers will absolutely demolish them. And the rushing attack will be shut down. Absolutely do not start any Cincinnati Bengal running backs this week. So with that, we wrap up our week 15 running back start and sit breakdowns. And as always, let us hear it in the comment section. Did you agree, disagree, along with any other start or sit questions you guys might have? We'll do our best to answer them. And if you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe, and also give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us there, shooting us your questions. We'll make sure to answer them there too. And check us out online at alldaypigskin.com. Sign up for our free newsletter to get access to exclusive content. All those details in the description. But for now, we'll see you guys in future videos.